Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education meeting of February 6th. May I have a motion to go into closed session? Pursuant to the General's Provision Article 3-305 and 3-104, I move we go into closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction, to consider matters that relate to the negotiations, to consult with staff and other individuals pending or for pending or potential litigation, to consult with counsel, and to perform an administrative function. Do I have a second? A second. A motion is second to go into closed session for all the reasons stated. Mrs. Wright. Board members, please respond when I call your name. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Morissette? Yes. I have three um, to their services. Motion carried. Okay. Uh, we'll be back at 6 o'clock. Good evening. Welcome to Queen Anne's County Board of Education February 6th meeting. I'd like to uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and have a moment of silence for our troops and first responders that are in harm's way at home and abroad. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> okay, I would like a motion to approve the agenda for tonight. I moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda for tonight. Mrs. Wright. Board members, please respond when I call your name. Kathy Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Harlow? Yes. Ms. Morissette? Yes. Ms. O'Connor? Yes. I have five under services. Thank you. Okay, the agenda is approved. Now I need a motion to approve the minutes open and closed from January 9th, January 23rd, January 30th, and open for January 16th. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve all those minutes. Um, this is right. Yes. Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Yes. Ms. O'Connor? Yes. I have five minutes. Thank you. Okay, the minutes are approved. Next item on our list is um, board involvement summary. Um, we Just for the public's information you heard by all those minutes, we've been very busy <coughs> with lots of meetings primarily pertaining to the budget development. Um, I don't have anything to add to involvement. I have been unable to do anything except get ready for this budget. So does anyone else have anything for the good of the <coughs> board? Understandable. Absolutely. Dr. Kane, superintendent's report. Absolutely. So it has seems like it hasn't been that very long since our last meeting, but it's been a month. Uh, on January 9th and 11th, Mr. Paluski and I, we had an opportunity to meet with leaders of uh, Chesapeake uh, College and Anne Arundel Community College. So we are moving forward in our planning for early college and expanding or looking at opportunities for our students to participate in programs at Anne Arundel. Um, on January 13th, um, I will be attending, I'm sorry, on February 13th, I'll be attending AASA, that's the Superintendents Association Conference. Uh, I serve as co-chair for the Superintendents Education, Environmental Education Consortium, so we will have a uh, session that we're offering there, and we're also uh, taking superintendents on a field trip to w do some whale watching, so that'll be exciting. So that's going to happen next week. On yesterday, I had my superintendent uh, student, staff, and parent advisory council meetings, and they were all very energetic. Uh, our students are going to be working on two different projects. They're going to be working on a campaign to um, inform students, their fellow students, about vaping. So uh, that's going to happen at the middle school level. And they're also going to be participating in a campaign on bus stop safety awareness. So we'll, we'll move <coughs> forward with that. So we're excited about that work. 
on uh, with our parents and with our staff advisory councils. We had great conversations about budget and how to increase the community's awareness of our priorities once they have been set. So they had lots of ideas about that. We had some very good conversation about school safety and we had some good conversations about bullying and ensuring that families are informed about um, protocol pr uh, procedures for what they need to do if they feel like their child is being bullied. Um, so we, it was a very productive day on yesterday and I look forward to our next meeting which will be April 2nd. Um, also just like to remind everyone that on March 11th there is March for Our Schools. Probably there are f uh, people in our um, at home, certainly folks at schools who are aware that this is happening. March 11th, March for Our Schools, it's a rally to, edu to advocate for educational funding. It is directly related to Kerwin and the uh, proposed legislation that's going to come down for funding education with that Kerwin Commission. So on March the 11th, we'll have teachers and staff to uh, get on buses and, and go down to Annapolis and, and rally for that. There was was a resolution that was read by our association president Karen Fields uh, last month and she was requesting support from the school board and what we have agreed to do is really meet pretty much all their needs. They asked, uh, we'll, we'll have principals to really reconsider scheduling meetings with teachers and staff on those days, and they are all amenable to doing that. We have asked them um, to also ensure that they know what substitutes are going to be um, in their buildings for after-school programs, because we won't be canceling any after-school programs or sporting events, but those employees who are employed to do after-school work, they're going to be getting substitutes so that the programs can continue we won't be disadvantaging anyone and our employees can participate in the rally if they so choose so we've worked that out with them we've distributed posters this week to advertise the rally so they're both in English and Spanish so we'll see those up in schools along with some other information I shared that information with our parent and staff advisories on yesterday as well uh, in addition the um, uh, association our employees are going to be using our high school parking lots to as pick up and drop off points so on March 11th high school parking lots will be used so that employees who want to attend can park their car there jump on a bus which the association has already arranged for themselves they really are trying to get a good number account of employees who will be participating so that they know how many buses to order so that's where we are um, and it seems to be working quite well we've been in um, regular communication with Ms. Fields and uh, working to support those efforts. I think I'm following to that. It's, it's, it's a, a good example of when the uh, association comes forward to us and wants to, to, to take care of something and do something and looking for our support. It's a, a good opportunity for cooperation between us and the uh, association. And I think what the superintendent has brought forward with Mrs. Fields is a good example of the collaboration be between our two units. Speaking of Mrs. Fields. <laughs> there she is. I thank you. Uh, Mr. Faluski, you're next. Thank you, Madam President. Just uh, three quick things. On uh, January 22nd, I had an opportunity to represent uh, the superintendent and executive team uh, at the county commissioner's meeting. Uh, each month, each one of our executive team members uh, will attend each of those county commissioners' meetings as a way to uh, open up communication and listen to uh, the business uh, of the county. On uh, January 24th, I had a great opportunity to represent Dr. Kane at the uh, Social Studies Expo that was at Stevensville Middle School. And wow, was it packed. Uh, the projects that each one of the students had done was just phenomenal. And kudos to the staff there, the Social Studies staff, Mr. Christ, uh, the leadership team, and uh, just what a, what a great feeling and a great opportunity to see student learning at its best. And so kudos to that. Uh, this week, Dr. Kane, myself, and Ms. Pauls have started our uh, second round of our sup uh, superintendent monitoring visit. So uh, yesterday we visited um, Kent Island High School. We were at the Annex in the morning. In the afternoon, we were at Kent Island Elementary School. And tomorrow we'll be at Mattapique Middle <coughs> School and then Mattapique Elementary School. So anticipate an update on our second round of the monitoring visits sometime this spring. Thank you. Okay, student member reports start with Queen Anne's. Sure. Good evening. 
Um, so first off, second semester is now underway. The seniors are starting their countdown. Um, about 73 days left. <laughs> um, <laughs> about 73. <laughs> um, the PBIS team is selling carnations for Valentine's Day. Um, they're going to be $2 each and sold on the 7th and 8th to be delivered on Valentine's Day. February 11th, there's a meet and greet at the high school for parents to come and meet second semester teachers. Um, spring sports orientation will be held February 13th at 6 p.m. in the Queen Anne's County High School Auditorium. Um, last week, the no, Monday, the boys basketball team upset Elkton um, with a score of 61 to 56, giving Elkton only their second loss of the season. So that was a big one for us. Um, and I didn't want to add this in my report, but my mom made me. Um, February 18th, <laughs> February 18th, I'll be competing for the 2A state championship title in shot put, having won the Bayside title and the regional title in the past two weeks. Good for mom. <laughs> Hi, my name is Marissa Teddy. I represent Ken Island High School. We will have a Spirit Week February 11th through 15th and our first ever Winter Pep Rally next Friday, February 15th to prepare for the home basketball game against Queen Anne's and celebrate our school. Student government's goal with this is to boost school spirit during the winter and increase awareness on the diversity of extracurriculars at Ken Island High School. We are also excited to accept the beach cleanup sculpture on February 12th. Final report cards will go home this Friday, February 8th. Spring sports orientation is Thursday, February 21st. Student of the month ceremony will be Friday, February 22nd. Elementary school basketball games will take place at Ken Island High School on Friday night, February 22nd, organized by the PTA at Ken Island Elementary School and Bayside Elementary School. And Mary Poppins, our spring production, begins March 1st at 7 p.m. Thank you, Marissa. Okay, this is a community participation and public comment period. We ask all speakers to keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster, including their phone number and address. Comments should be li limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Organizations, municipalities, elected officials have five minutes, individuals three minutes. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a recent agenda item an agenda item that is expected to appear in the future or a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. Please do not discuss items related to negotiations. Those items are to be discussed at the bargaining table. This is not the proper venue to address specific student or employee personnel matters, especially those matters on legal appeal to the board. Comments about the actions or statements of individual members are not appropriate for public comments and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or processed through the available channels. Citizens participation is not intended to be a question and answer session. If you have specific questions, the board asks that you will make, we will sh uh, make sure the appropriate staff member responds to your questions at a later date. The board re respects your desire and right to convey your message freely and asks as a courtesy to this board and our citizens that you respect the board's request to refrain from naming citizens and name calling when you refer offering critique. Our first person on the list is Richard McNeil. Don't start the timer yet. I'll wait till you get done saying your name. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Richard McDale, and tonight I'm here for a couple of things. One, um, in one of my roles uh, as a retired person, I monitor and, uh, and facilitate the life skills program for the University of Colorado at Boulder, to which we are using in the, in the school system. We are into our third year of that. We started out with sixth grade, went to seventh grade, and this year, we're, this spring, will be getting it into the eighth grade. And I just want to uh, say again how well this program is put together. Uh, in this day and age when we're trying to facilitate good decision making across the board on everything, good friends, uh, good decisions about who you're driving with, who you're texting, what you're texting, how you're doing, a lot of things. Uh, I really like this program. And Christine Webster, who is the person who delivers it, uh, I think just does a great job. Uh, in fact, I was in her room today uh, and just reminded me how well that program is helping our children, hopefully, to build those skills on how to um, make decisions. And uh, to, the lesson today was about how do you get help for somebody who needs help? You know, how do you go to get help? for somebody and how do you convince them to get help and so forth. Um, even if it's an older brother or older sister or somebody within their family or a friend. 
Uh, I just like the program, um, and uh, I don't know whether Mr. Perluski has, has looked at it or not, but sure. it, I think it's a good program, and I'd like to see how it's going to continue. Um, I'm interested in seeing how the eighth graders respond. They will have had this for three years. Uh, I was in a seventh grade class today, and those kids just, you could tell they reflected back on what they were doing from last year. And, you know, we don't always think of seventh graders remembering what they did yesterday, but they did a good job in that class. So I just wanted to say something to that. Also, um, I know a bunch of times, you know, you start looking at what you can cut and what you can't. I want to give a, uh, another shout out for the mentor program that I uh, am a part of. Uh, I just think it's great. We, we help young teachers uh, get off to a good start. Um, I, I've been blessed with, with several this year that I work with that are just doing a great job. They're not perfect yet, and you know, but we're helping them to get through this idea of the profession of teaching and learning all the standards that go with that that the state has and the federal government and has put on top of that. That's a, that's a lot, not, not only learning your content, but all the standards that go with that and so forth. And I just uh, appreciate what Janet Pauls does for that to facilitate that and all the other uh, members of our group who do that. So we know that the legislative process is underway. Um, I know we have two members in our group who monitor legislation for that might have an impact on pensions, both now and in the future. Uh, there's always been a move to move the way pensions are uh, funded uh, and we, we monitor that not only for us as retirees, but the people who are actually working now who might retire in the next couple of years and so forth. Um, just a shout out for us, we were recognized at a state meeting, our retirement group, for the quality of our newsletter. So uh, I'll just <laughs> pat ourselves on the back. Yay. Um, the, at a, <laughs> in the middle of a state meeting, it came up and, uh, you know, it's just nice, I think, um, Madeline Hubbard, who <clears throat> takes all that and puts it together, uh, just does a great job. Uh, I give her the credit. She interprets my, my English and makes it perfect on there and everybody else. But uh, it was just a nice, nice way of uh, saying thanks to us for Queen Anne's County and so forth. Um, I'd like to throw out a challenge to everybody here and whoever's listening. Um, you know, Valentine is next week, and you know, that's supposed to be somebody special, but I I challenge you to do a random act of, of kindness for somebody next week. Um, and we did that. I did that with a young teacher yesterday. It was her birthday. She didn't want, let anybody know. She was sort of down in the dumps. I knew her birthday from a conversation we had had when first met her back in, in, in August. And um, just gave her a quick balloon and, you know, and a card. God oh, bless you. Bless you. All of a sudden, tears came out of her eyes. And I'm thinking, you know, we, when we do something just out of the blue for somebody else, um, we get the benefit of that and they get the benefit of it. So I challenge you in the next week or so, if you think of it, buy a cup of coffee for somebody or, or just say something special to somebody and, and see how it works out. You'll probably feel better for it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Neal. Cecilia Mitchell. Hi, <laughs> don't start my time yet, I know you. Hi, I'm Cecilia Mitchell. I am the political chair committee. Oh my gosh, political action chair committee committee. Oh my goodness, I'm so off my game right now. Political action committee chair for Queen Anne's County Education Association. I'm so sorry. I'm doing this very impromptu. Um, I'm here for Karen Fields and the rest of the association to thank Dr. Kane and the board for your support of the legislative rally in Annapolis on March 11th. We'd like very much to invite you to come with us. We have buses leaving from the high schools and we've got plenty of seats. You can come with a friend. We've got a sign up sheet for you. We're leaving tonight. We'll even give you dinner. Um, it's really important that we raise our voice and, and ask for what our kids deserve and they cannot <laughs> wait. So we do have a Facebook page that also has a link that, for the signing up that we share with Dr. Kane and it's Queen Anne's County Education Association. That's it. Sorry for the stumble at the beginning. I really didn't expect to be here tonight. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak? And that's all we have for this evening. Right, next item is presentations. 
Um, first thing is Queens County Public Schools Energy Conservation. Mr. Pender. Mr. Pender. Pass that on down to Jerry. Thank you. I get the Good evening, board members, Dr. Kane. I'm Sid Pender, Chief Operating Officer for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. And hang on, there we go. And each year, we haven't done, done this for a few years, but each year we would always give an update on our utility cost and strategies we had for implementing um, energy conservation back in basically 2005. And tonight's purpose is to explain the effectiveness of the Queen Anne's County Public Schools energy conservation policy and the cost saving measures associated with implementing the regulations. Each day, th this I want to say is not a cheap ticket item. The cost to operate the buildings is a very expensive and I wanted to point out the daily average cost just on average. Uh, for all of our buildings to run is about $5,198. So we multiply that times 365 and you come up with a fairly large number. We are down about 7% over where we were operating um, last year for the cost per daily average. So I kind of wanted to give you a perspective of the amount of money we're talking about. The average utility bill per month, um, just to give you a ballpark, high school, is about $36,000. Middle school is 8,100 and the elementary school is about 7,500. And that is average. When you start getting into the winter months for a high school, you could start talking 45, $48,000 once you include the propane, um, uh, heating oil, those types of things. Um, every time the uh, propane truck shows up to Ken Island High School or Queen Anne's County High School, that's 9,000 gallons of propane that uh, is being put into that 18,000 gallon tank. So again, a substantial amount of cost associated with um, utility bills. Um, one thing I did want to say, when you're looking at the HVAC system for air conditioning or heat in, a, in one of our buildings, we're required by ASHRAE to pull in 10 to 15% outside air. So when you go home at your house, you set the thermostat for say 65 degrees, it hits 65 degrees, it shuts off. We're not allowed to do that because we constantly have to bring in outside air to replace the air that's inside, you know, with carbon dioxide. Um, so all that air that we bring in at 10 to 15% outside air, that all has to be conditioned. So imagine if it's eight degrees outside, we have to condition that air, we bring it in. So you'll feel the room kind of warm up and then all of a sudden you'll feel cooler air. That's the fresh air just keeping it coming in. And it's kind of like up and down like the ebb tide. Um, so it's not just as simple as you set it to say, like I said, 70 degrees and you let it ride. There's a lot of different factors playing and are involved in this. We also have some geothermal schools um, that are highly, highly um, efficient. Um, the cost to operate, uh, say, Mattapique Middle School compared to a, say, Centerville Middle School it's, it's really a large uh, gap there. Um, geothermal mm -hmm. is the way to go. Energy cost percentages. What I kind of wanted to give you here was an overview of what areas we were spending on um, for the utilities. So electric makes up almost 78%. Water and sewer is about 10%. Propane is about 7.3. And heating oil is 4.4. And I think something in, to, uh, that is important to note here is we started this program uh, back in 2005 because really we had no energy guidelines um, and whatever ran just ran. Um, and I'll show you some, some things we did towards the end. But basically in 2004 we were paying 84 cents for a gallon of propane. Um, in 2007, 8, it spiked up to about $1.82. 
so we're going from you know 84 cents to dollar 82 to right now we're at about a dollar 53 for a bobtail and dollar 26 for transport so it's come back down but we're, we're never going to see those numbers of you know 89 cents again for heating oil in 2004 we were paying 87 cents a gallon um, that spiked in about 2008 to uh, $3.44. Um, and currently, right now, we're paying $2.20. Our electric back in 2004 was six cents a kilowatt. All right, we're paying about 14 cents a kilowatt right now. And we have done a really good job with that. Uh, we belong to ESMEC, so we purchase energy with the Eastern Shore groups um, to bring down that cost and basically buy it in blocks so that we're not stuck with one price. Um, the other um, advantages you will see in next year's presentation, hopefully, will be um, the Centerville Middle School Queen Anne's County Solar Array. So if you imagine we're paying 14 cents for a kilowatt hour right now, um, basically our PPA for there is five and a half cents and six and a half cents. And that rate will stay for 20 years. There is no es escalator on that. Um, Graysonville Elementary School is um, 4.7 cents with a 2% escalator on it. So after 20 years, we'll be paying about uh, 6.8 cents for a kilowatt. Now, don't forget, nothing's free, okay? So you still get that one or two cents added on there by Delmarva Power, just in case you have to have them as a backup. So there is, you know, associate on top of that. But again, that's a lot smaller compared to 14 cents uh, that we're paying. So cost avoidance, everything that we do here is measured back into the 2004-2005 year. Um, and since then, every utility bill gets entered into our database. And I want to make sure tonight that I show you what apples to apples are and oranges to oranges, because sometimes you can look at things and go, hey, you did a great year in, uh, you know, around a tenth year there. You, you know, you saved about a million dollars. All right. But what was the temperature like outside? Was it a cold winter? Was it a warm winter? I, and I really want to show you that. So everything is based off, like I said, 2004 to 2005. Had we continued to use the same amount of utilities that we had that year um, and not cut back, let me back up, if we didn't curtail what we were doing, this is the amount of money that we would not have saved, okay? So if you're looking at the utilities up there, in our first year, basically, we you know, cut out around uh, $280,000, $290,000. So there's 13 years we've been doing this. And on some of those items, like I said, some of them can be misleading. And I don't like to go by just looking at the bare facts. So with that being said, let's take a look at the cost avoidance for the 13 years. As you can see, we started out around $287. Um, year 10, we were around a million dollars. Um, year 11, 12, 13, basically we're running around 751 to $700,000. Now, I will tell you that I did the energy portion for years when I was in charge of facilities, and it takes a lot of time to program all the buildings and make sure they're in setback mode. So <coughs> you will see on there that there has been a little bit of not of a sharp curve there of keeping the same amount. It just it requires a tremendous amount of time, and Jim O'Donnell um, has helped me out with that and does a great job with that. So we're looking at about 13 years, about $9 million, 9.1, that we avoided spending for our utilities. Now, in 2004, we used 14.7 million kilowatt hours of electric, 154,000 gallons of heating oil, 248 gallons of propane used. Total spent in 2004 was 1.64 million. If we were to have used the same amount of utilities, the same amount of kilowatts, gallons of uh, heating oil and propane, we'd be paying $3 million this year, $3 million. So when you're looking at that, this is somewhere, what do we want to pay? Do we want to pay for the utilities or we'd like to put that back into the school system or pay for some other you know, items that, you know, we're not just running the buildings 24-7. Here, um, and I'll use my little lovely pointer Mr. Poluski gave me. Um, basically, when I say that everything is, is geared towards our first year, in 2004-2005, um, we used about uh, 14, 
0.8 million kilowatt hours in our first year that we based everything off of, all right? In our first year of the program, we cut out about $1.4 million. These are actual kilowatts. This isn't, you know, cost avoidance. This is straight off of the meter, what we've done. And over the years, we've eliminated 25.1 million kilowatt hours. Charge that times 14 cents. Um, it starts adding up to a lot of money. What I'm proud of is in year six, we added Mattapeak Middle School. In the eighth year, we added Sellersville Middle School. And we did an addition at Kennard um, in the 10th. And with Stevensville Middle School came in on the 11th. So imagine all those schools are geothermal. That's straight electricity. We are still under where we were by almost 2 million kilowatt hours. And these are just simple things that we've done with the EMS systems and a few other different strategies. So you've brought that amount of electric usage on and we still cut off almost 2 million kilowatt hours. With the reduction of heating oil, and again, this is where it can be misleading if you don't really read into the, the information. So basically, when you look at heating oil, somebody's gonna say to you, hey, in uh, year seven, you saved, uh, you cut out 90,000 gallons of propane, 90,000 gallons. Well, how come you only cut out in year two about 18,000 gallons? It's called heating degree days. So anything, the average uh, temperature is say 60. Anything under 60 each day gets calculated as a heating degree day. So if it's 40 degrees out, you got 20 heating degree days that day. Um, so what I wanna show you, and what I like to do is I like to take years where we had the same amount of heating degree days and just compare, are we doing a good job? What are we missing here? But also, when, say, um, Stevensville Middle School came online, we did away with the heating oil there. So, you know, you're looking about right in there is when Stevensville Middle School came online. So, you know, you had a little spike in that. You have to take that into account. But with that being said, in year nine and in year 10, we had about 2,900 um, heating, degree, heating degree days there. So if you take that into account, we still cut out almost 50,000 heating uh, gallons, heating oil gallons. Um, so those are the kinds of things. In our base year, we used 155,000 gallons of heating oil. So again, you're curving back on that. But again, looking at this here, you did a great job that year. Well, yeah, you did because you should have because you only had uh, 1,712 heating degree days. I mean, so... <coughs> Like I said, I try to compare things to make sure it's apples to apples, and it's just not somebody saying, hey, we did a great job. Well, yeah, you did. You should have. It was a warm, a warm winter. Um, propane, here's kind of the same thing. What I like to look at is comparable years. If you're looking at year one and the fifth year, they are about 2,485 heating degree days. Um, so we're right in ballpark of eliminating around 30,000 gallons. If you jump up here, yes, you should have done a great job uh, with the, you know, the minimal amount of heating degree days. Um, year 10, was that, uh, that was the year we had seven days of snow? You got it. Yeah. Year 10 was um, 2,950 heating degrees, but we still cut out about 20,000 gallons off of that. Um, and like 20 below? Yep. <laughs> So, you know, again, these are the kind of charts I like to look at because it is comparing, you know, the actual numbers. Summer reduction. And this is kind of where we've gone to our four-day work week um, over the years when we were asked to, to make major cuts. Um, we went to the four-day work week. And, you know, people will sit there and say, well, hey, you're saving 20 percent, um, you know, because you're closed one day. Well, you're actually not saving 20%. You're around about 12 to 13% because you're running your buildings a longer amount of time on that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. All right, but what I want to point out here is the same thing that we had for heating degree days. Anything over 60 degrees, it's a cooling degree day. So if it's 90 degrees that day, you add 30 heat, um, cooling degree days on there. 
Um, in our base summer back in 2004, we used about 3.7 million kilowatt hours. Just by doing these simple little measures of combining summer school into one section so that, okay, Mrs. Jones doesn't have pod A, we're not opening pod C for one classroom, but hey, let's put them all in one pod and have summer school there, or let's team clean and set back the other buildings so that we don't have two custodians in one building just cleaning the whole entire building. Those little simple things have really made a huge reduction um, of what we've been able to uh, save. So when I'm looking at this, basically, if you want to look at uh, year eight and year 11, we're about the same amount of cooling degree days. So when I'm looking at this chart, I would go to our maintenance and also our custodians and, and instructional people. What, what did we have going on at year? Why didn't we do as well as that? Um, do we have different summer schools? Do we have extended? Um, I can tell you right in here, we only had half day of summer school. When you start cracking down to here, we had PFY in the afternoon. So then therefore, yes, we're running the buildings. So you're, you're having savings, but you constantly, constantly want to be monitoring it to make sure that we're not spending, you know, the taxpayer's money in a wasteful manner. Um, percentages of savings. We are very, very consistent to where we're at right now. Um, we started out in our first year with about a 15%. And we're going to stay around 25% of what we've spent, what we used. So that's actually, uh, you know, I'm proud of our staff and the people that put the time into this to get us at that 25%. Now, if we just kind of walk away from what we're doing, it's, it's going to go away and you're going to go straight back down. So we're constantly monitoring that to keep that 25%. So what have we done to, um, for our success? Nighttime weekend setbacks. So s remember I said that the units bring in outside air. If we let that run 24 seven, we're gonna be paying a, you know, a large amount of money. So with the nighttime weekend setbacks for heat, it is um, 60 degrees for a boiler propane system. It's 65 um, for a geothermal system. The buildings never get cut off. Um, so when it gets down to say 60, we have that coast time. It may take till about 10 o'clock at night, depending on the outside weather. It may not hit 60 until about four o'clock in the morning. Um, we gave out HVAC maps to the administrators saying, hey, rooftop unit one covers rooms 101, 102, 103, 104. Can you use that at Churchill Elementary School for your summer school and can find those students? Um, consolidation of summer schools after school activities um, again we're four days so what we did with parks and recs where we can we had them use um, portables modulars which you know is a dollar an hour to operate um, so nobody really got left out the the only issue we do have parks and rec that always ask hey can we have after school activities in the summertime in the buildings there is a major cost associated with running those buildings um, we went through did facility audits to see where we had gaps. And then one of the best things we did was um, the monthly calendars for HVAC. Every school turns one into Jolene Gottlieb and she puts it on a master calendar so that we can go, okay, um, you know, Queen Anne's County Youth Baseball is running out the gym this weekend. They don't want air conditioning. They don't want heat. Um, they're just, it's just basic, you know, in the building at that time. Or say we have a, a National Honor Society program at Queen Anne's County High School we know the air conditioning needs to be on, the heat needs to be on. Um, again, we talked about summer school. We put in a new energy management system controls on our buildings. So basically, from my laptop, um, out of the 14 buildings, I can operate 11 of them from there. We want to increase that to get all 14 on there. But that's a tremendous asset instead of myself or Jim O'Donnell riding back and forth every night because something gets missed, you know, where they forgot to tell us something. You just pull out the laptop, turn it on, and just go with it. Um, it's much easier to diagnose. Again, we talked about team cleaning with the custodians grouping from like three schools down to one school and then rotating through that. Um, here's some interesting facts that I kind of wanted to share with you. If you cut off the lights in all of our buildings for just say one hour when you leave for your planning period, <coughs> or if you're leaving for some, something else, 
that's about $37,000. And I mean, those little tiny things add up. Um, the, when you call the uh, Phantom, the standby load in the summertime, all the computers, all the personal refrigerators, all those things that are just sitting there, just in July and August, comes up to about $18,000. Again, small, but it adds up. Here's the, the large one right here. So we, put, we go to nighttime setback, and this is one of the items we put in, implemented back in 2004, 2005. <coughs> for every 15 minutes that all of our buildings run for a year, it's about $25,000 to $26,000. So if we have them running full throttle for one hour, you're talking $100,000. So multiply $100,000 to how many extra hours you want to go with that. So if you want to go until the next morning, you know, you're talking another million dollars we would have to find for that. Again, they just go into setback mode. Um, vending misers, just regulating how much the compressor runs. The product still stays the same. There's no difference. Here, here's another large one. If you left all the computers on 24-7 for a year, it's about $650,000 we would pay an extra. <coughs> um, <coughs> computers on just during the school hours, Look at that, $154,000. And Josh Combs has put programs in there to help us you know, work with that from ComTech, done a great job. Here's something that kind of just blows me away. Yeah, we pay 14 cents for a kilowatt at Ken Allen High School, but guess what? If it goes to 15 cents, that's another $2,000 to our electric bill. 16 cents, $4,000. $4,000 times 12 months, you're talking, you know, 48000 So middle school is not as bad. It only goes up $800. We have saved about $38,000 a year on our outside lighting schedule. Um, basically, we run them till about 1130 at night, set them back, bring them on 530 uh, in the morning when people start coming in, back off at 7. Just those, you know, six or seven hours cuts out $38,000 a year. So those are the items that I kind of wanted to concentrate on and let you know what we've done and you know our success um, and really show you the apples to apples and not just look at the cost avoidance of that. Are there any questions or comments or? Sure, yes ma'am. My question is just, I know that we subcontract out with Sodexo. Is there any, um, the, the electrical usage that they need on our facilities is that no we we go just, back we just pay for that or no. do they ever add money to we consolidate actually they work very well with us we consolidate <coughs> our storage units and the refrigeration and freezers in the summertime so that we're not running all the reach-ins so we'll move things to ken island high, i'm sorry queen's county high school that has a large walk-in we'll also do the same thing at bayside on ken island so they don't um Really. All their ovens that need to be turned on? Or no, not. Just, we just, just pay for all that summer and school, they yeah, get to use it? Summer school, basically, at uh, Sellersville Elementary School, is the one school that has the, the warm meals that they prepare there. Um, and that does have some, I believe, federal funding that helps out with that. But most of the time, they consolidate in our coiffe and they make the lunches in here, and then they transport them to the summer school to cut down on the cost associated with that. So they, they do work with us with that. Good, thank you. Any other questions or comments? I, I just want to have one question. Um, well, the comment was this is good information and something to know, if, it's good for you to know for your family too, some of these things that you do. Um, my, what do you have in, in store for the future? You're doing a great job here. Do you have some new ideas coming out for what well, we might we're do still, next year? We're still looking at different avenues of solar. The only problem with solar is the only way that you can really save on that is a ground mount system. Um, putting solar on top of a building has cost associated with it. Um, so Centerville Middle School and Queen Anne's County High School solar array, we're not really going to see the benefits of that because it just came online because we had to wait for the substation um, out by Southern States to come up. Um, I would say better lighting, um, LED lighting for exterior, interior, um, ERVs which go into the um, heating and air conditioning and then also variable frequency drives 
on our units so that it's not running at 100%. It can throttle back to, you know, say 50% when that need is met. Th those areas cut down on you. Um, and again, any building that moving forward, if we can get a geothermal system in there, um, that is the, the best opportunity that we could have. Yes. Just out of curiosity, you mentioned the solar being a ground mount versus on top of a building. If we did choose to do that again, replicate it for something in our school system, does it have to be on actual school property that we own, or could it be on another location and then that energy is fused toward whatever school needs it? You, you can do that. Um, there's a lot of regulations tied in with that. The easiest way is to do what we did with Queen Anne's school um, in Centerville, but yes, you can. Now, we were able to take, since we had a little bit of overproduction there, we were able to take some of that and net meter it at Ken Island High School. Oh, that's um, nice. So you can shift that so, overflow yes. to another school. So we're able to net a certain percentage of it. Yeah. Um, but you're you're able to do that. It's just you really got to go through the proper hoops to get to that point, and it takes a long time to get there. Um, so. Is there a thought that once it becomes fruitful, um, that there'll be enough overage from those fields near the middle school to then? You'll have, there, you'll have additional, you'll have more than you thought to, to be transferred out to the other. You may school. be able to, and, and we really won't know that until probably the summertime when the system is, you know, really maxed out at what's, what's occurring. But they try to leave about a 20% variable in there um, so they don't go over or go way under with that. Um, and again, it, it's under a power purchase agreement, so they're obligated to maintain the solar panels because, you know, we're paying at you know five and a half to six and a half cents for that so um th there's gonna and there's gonna be a lot of opportunities coming up here that, for that's different exciting, things actually. but I i'd say the lighting is probably a large one we could conquer Andrew, have we thought about doing a cost analysis on trying to put the geothermal at the different schools we we have talked about that um again it's going to it's a capital project well um, and would we have to go out of the footprint of the current school systems you know, I mean, we're looking yeah. at Ken Island. When we redid that, do we even consider putting geothermal in there? Ken Island Elementary? Yeah. It is geothermal. Okay, thank Ken you. Ken Island, I'm sorry, Ken Island Elementary School, Mattapique Elementary, Mattapique Middle, um, Graysonville Elementary School has a partial, okay. um, Sellersville Middle School has one. Um, Sellersville Elementary School when we did no, that? No, just And Kennard when we did that build out? No. No. And there was no thought about doing it at Kennard when we were when we put that extra. I wasn't involved. At, oh, that's at that right. Time sorry, that I'm was sorry. I. But you have to look at the, the land. But sure. we're in a prime area that it's not rocky, it's sandy. So the cost of drilling is a lot cheaper than it would be if say you were in Pennsylvania trying to do something like this. Stone. Um, and like I said, looking at the numbers, comparing like say those two schools, it's a geothermal. It's unbelievable the cost per square footage to operate a geothermal compared to a traditional boiler or rooftop unit one. Just an interesting thought how we would But moving on. forward yeah. with different renovations or whatever, yes, I, we totally agree with that. Okay. So. Another thought I had was um, in line with what uh, Ms. O'Connor was saying is we, one idea is to think of the, you know, partnering with the county there's a lot of land out here. Mm -hmm. And I think, I'm wondering if near the new county buildings there by Little Kidwell over that way, they got a lot of property there. I mean, there's, there is space to put, I don't know if we own all that property, but there is space for solar. Maybe. And if we can, you know, like you're doing, sending it to Ken Island High School, we partner with the county for their buildings being solar and then, you know. They have a large complex out on Safety Drive that, uh, feeds a lot of their buildings oh, and then they okay. also have one um, that feeds um, if you look down to the sanitation department on Ken Island um, they have on their stack houses they have solar on top of those so we have talked to the, them about different opportunities <coughs> and all because it is a good you know chance to join them with some of them okay all right good nice. thank you thank, thank you. you well done Okay, as I said, we, I will be trying to give people breaks so they can contact home if they need to. So we're going to take a five-minute break. We're ahead of schedule, so perfect. Okay. Be back in five. Welcome back to our meeting. Um, next item on the agenda, expenditure reports. Mr. Fister. All right. Thank you, Dr. Kane. Captain Kelly, board members. Um, before you is the expenditure report, item 7.01. Um, 
I've reviewed these documents and there's, there's really no surprises here. Uh, spending seems to be on par. Uh, as a matter of fact, I compared it to the same time last year where we had expended or obligated our budget at about 91.5%. And as you can see from this report, we're hovering just under 91%. So, so we're right on par as where we, where we were this time last year. However, as we talked about it last month, um, we had the category of health services and now transportation uh, are in overspent due to the negative amount in salaries and wages. This negative is directly tied to the support staff scale increase this board approved last September. Um, as we talked about last, last month also, uh, these budget lines had not been adjusted since we loaded the budget in July uh, because the negotiations lasted in through to the summer and therefore um, we're not reflecting of that salary increase. I will be asking for your approval tonight in uh, item 8.02 to do a categorical transfer to rebalance these categories. Um, be happy to answer any questions. I do have a question. When are we going to have it recorded that this this additional um, salaries were in there? I w once you have, if you approve the um, categorical transfer tonight, I will then go in and make the adjustment. But keep in mind, we also have to have county council approval before we can legitimately make the corrections to state categories as required by state law. Right. And these additional salaries we had agreed to when the budget was passed. Yes. Mm -hmm. But if you remember, when we, when we set the budget, negotiations weren't finalized yet. So where that money is, is in a different place than where it ended up being negotiated and finalized. So we just have to transfer between categories, and that's what you're being reflected tonight in 8.02. And it's all for salaries. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's some other things in the transfer, but related to these specific things, it is the salaries that are, that are driving this. And I also believe in the transportation area, we've, we've got some additional overtime, and I think we have a route that's going over the other side of the bridge that's requiring some additional personnel. So that is driving some of that salary and wage in the transportation category to be a little bit heavy as well. So are we approving the letter tonight too? Yes, ma'am. The next item on the agenda. You have and it as can you read to me what it says? Where, Just we get there. the categories, the titles? Yes, ma'am. I was gonna pull my Absolutely. laptop out, but. Okay. Then we're, okay. the next item is the transfer. So the next item is the transfer report. So let's step back 30 days when we did talk about some of the items that needed to be transferred. And I went ahead and prepared the letter, but I realized that I had not presented the letter to the board. So it doesn't require an approval. It's more of an information only item. But I'm a little retrospect. I wanted to make sure the board saw it. We will send this letter over to the commissioners. It's information only because of those categorical Oh, they're within cool. categorical transfers, and I'd just like to go through them quickly. Um, in the category of instruction, we're asking to move, um, or we moved, $7,140 from contracted services to equipment to purchase cafeteria tables for Churchill Elementary School. In the category of special education, we moved from uh, $7,600 from some salary savings we were anticipating to materials of instruction uh, to provide additional special ed uh, resources to the schools. Uh, across all the, the entire district. And then in operation of plant, um, we are moving $10,800 um, to allow staff to attend uh, the National Conference for the Student Information, the technical staff, to go to the National Conference to support the Student Information System or Power School. What is that? We don't have that one on our... That's not you, you have, that should be... We don't have it's that. not in... That's not the one uh, we're looking at, sir. It's not on my... Uh, I have the transfer oh. letter. That's all I have. That one. Um, this would be 7.02. That just says transfer report. It's only only transfer is all we have on it. I I, I did pull it up on mine. Oh, so you did. Yes, yes, really? That's, all I have. that's where you. That's it. Transfer letter. Is it? Wait. Oh, yeah, that's it. Oh, oh, go to this one. Oh. Yeah. Within. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm That's sorry. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at the wrong category. Who is the transfer report, not the transfer it's, report? It's underneath expenditure reports. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. I see it now. Seven, it's 7.02 is the, the transfer spot. report. Thank you. And again, this is just for information only. Um, it doesn't require your approval, but I did want you to see the letter going forward to um, the county as required by um, 5105 that we inform everybody. Can you just describe the um, national conference for the student? information system 
Mr. Pelusi, can you help out a little bit? But sure. it is the National Conference for Power School. I believe we're sending three members. I believe it's down in Florida. And I, this is something that isn't attended, I don't believe, every year. But I believe this one is of utmost importance because of a... Sure. Uh, so uh, Power School is our data management system. So that allows us to share grades, uh, review grades. It allows us to... Um, our, our discipline, storage of information. It is our back end of our student data warehouse system. Currently, uh, Mr. Chris Brown is our data management specialist. So we have one individual that's dedicated to this. Uh, what we've recognized is we need to build more capacity uh, in the event that Mr. Brown is out. Uh, we need somebody to have a backup. So there are two individuals that are actually in Mr. Dave Brown's shop, their accountability specialist. Uh, our request is to send them as well uh, so that they get differentiated, personalized instruction on this data management system. So it's really intended to where the user is. So somebody like Chris Brown, who's who works in this every day, needs different professional development than somebody that's just uh, advancing their skills, so to speak. And, and, and if I could add, th this isn't a, a conference where they sit and watch seminars. This is actually Power School University. Correct. So it is actually training classes. Yes. Hands on. Great. A little easier to defend. Yes, ma'am. I'll just add in, as a parent, I use it quite often to get in and out of my children's report cards. Sure. So more than just students and teachers and people actually inside the school system benefit. So. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. You can speak firsthand to the, the value, the certainly value, from a absolutely. parent's perspective. Yeah. I know, and they shut it down in between semesters. I was going nuts. Me too. Hey, you or the can't, students. You can't <laughs> access it. So are the teachers. Are you hiding from me? <laughs> <laughs> a lot. I remember when we went to it, it, it was what, what a, a great piece of it. Um, you know, Mm -hmm. It was fabulous. It, it you, you, you have I mean, to have it from a kid who didn't have yes. it to a kid, a child that did have it. It it was night and day. You, you have today's day and age. You have to have a data management yeah. system. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank, well, thank you. you. All right. Next thing is the uh, HR report. Dr. Kane, members of the board, I would ask that you please approve the HR report as discussed. Okay, may I have a motion to approve the HR report as discussed in closed session? So moved. That's second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve the HR report discussed in closed session. Mrs. Wright. Board members, please respond when I call your name. Captain Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Harlow? Yes. Ms. Lissette? Yes. Ms. O'Connor? Yes. Thank you. The HR report is approved. Next item is the transfer request. Okay. Thank you again, board members. Um, so in front of you is a transfer request. Again, some of this is to fix what we just talked about in the expenditure report with cross-categorical transfers. And I'll speak to that since it's most um, fresh in our mind that we were going to be reducing um, some, with some salary savings within the instructional category and adding $23,000 to health service this is and 109000 to transportation. Um, and you'll see that as, as the second set of transfers on the letter. But I want to speak a little bit to the first set of transfers. So the first set of transfer is we need an additional $21,998 in the category of administration. What that is almost directly re related to is we have now and been faced with a mandatory upgrade of our financial and HR system. Going into this budget season, we did not know that the support for our current version, which is, I believe, is 5.0, um, would be expiring in April or May. So we are being forced in order to maintain uh, support for our systems to upgrade to the most current version, which is 5.2. The contract that I have from PowerSchool to do this upgrade is $20,898. And of course, as we've talked about, um, with our lean resources and especially in administration, the resources are not there. So I'm requesting a, a transfer so that I can go ahead and prepare the purchase order so that we can continue with our financial and our HR system going forward. And just want to reiterate that this was brought to us 
probably about an October or November time frame when we realized the current version that we were on would no longer be supported. As you can imagine, you know, Microsoft no longer supports Windows 3.1 or Windows 95 or any of that kind of stuff. So this is an evolution of the game. This one did catch us a little bit by surprise. Uh, we thought we had a little more likely uh, li livelihood with this version. However, I've checked with surrounding counties, Talbot, Caroline, that use the same version. Um, and uh, we will be doing um, an upgrade the same time Caroline is doing. And we were able to sort of piggyback with them a little bit and cost save with by sharing of some resources so we could do some common training with Caroline as they go through their resources. So um, we're asking for that transfer. And then uh, we would be pulling that money out of um, the fixed charges category. So we would not be hitting the instructional category uh, and moving it to administration. It would be fixed charges. We have to find the money somewhere. This is where right now I feel that we can absorb this transfer to be able to continue with our financial and HR systems. One thing to also note, um, I was able to uh, push off a little bit of the upgrade into next fiscal year. So there will be some additional costs that we'll talk about in next fiscal year. Uh, rather than having a close to a $35,000 cost as part of this upgrade, we were able to negotiate with the vendor so that we could minimize the impact of this year's budget. And how long will this upgrade be supported? I mean, are we on a five-year plan that we'll have to look toward in the five-year future <laughs> that we will be doing this again? How long have we been on? So there are some enhancements to this. It's not just a simple upgrade. There are some enhancements that, that we are looking, looking to add to this as well. Um, but generally, you want to be on about a two-year cycle. And I think we're on a five-year cycle. And I don't want to be put into the point where we're coming to this board asking, I'll use the term, an emergency transfer so that we can continue to pay people and write checks. Um, no, we no, want no. to have a plan I don't in want place. Us in that, that position either. But yeah. I don't want us doing it every two years either. If we're doing it at five years now and it's costing us $21,000, I don't necessarily have an issue with that. I just wonder how we... Yeah, God, and, and I would think year. future, if we did get on a two-year schedule, we would be kept more current, so therefore some of the training costs and the... So instead of doing it all at once, yes, you would we, do a little every couple yes, of years. And try to minimize costs. One thing I have... Which pushed, actually is better for your system anyway, absolutely. because then you're not lagging behind in one segment that really needed to go along with one of the new updates, and you're not going to do it till next year. Right. I get that. And, and um, the one thing that this will do, this will get all of the Eastern Shore counties that use this particular program, I think it's five in total, on the same version. So as we do, and we, will, we are talking, matter of fact, we have a meeting here in this boardroom, I think next week, with some of those officials that make those decisions uh, from the other counties, that we want to upgrade collectively so that we're all on the same version. Sure. We can all share in some of these costs to minimize the burden to everybody. Well, yeah. We're just yeah. playing catch up It here. just seems like they knew it was coming and we didn't, and I kind of wonder how we didn't know we were running out at the five-year mark. Well, or whatever mark we're at, where we are running so out. So we we've we're we're going from 5.0 to 5.2. Some of our colleagues are on 5.1. So with their resources, they were able to maintain an upgrade. Okay. So they're not under the gun of April, but but Caroline County wants to get to where we're going to be to kind of get us all on 5.2 mm -hmm. as an example, mm -hmm. um, so we can get there and move forward. I wonder once we're all on the same system, we could create like an ESMEC issue, or we could go to Microsoft and say we'll do this every two years together. What kind of deal can you give us? That's, that's what we're looking to do. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Well, it's way better to do your upgrades little by little every couple of years because your system overall performs better than to let them sit, 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 and then all of a sudden try to throw them all in. And maybe by then they're all obsolete anyway. Yes. So, yeah. I, I, I and like again, we, we will build a thought. plan going forward. So just like the technology plan, matter of fact, will be a good part to even include that as part of the technology plan because... We have to pay employees and we have to write checks to vendors and things like well, that. Well, I was so going to say, so this is continue. finance and human resources. Yes, ma'am. This is our hiring, yeah. our um, debt our collection and system. payment, mm -hmm. um, the way we pay our it's staff. Purchase orders, where we keep our it's records purchasing, on it's bids, HR. it's contracts. Great. Great. So it's really two organizations yes. within our group, yes, ma not one. The That's real important, I think, to make the point. Mm -hmm. Okay. When there's any questions about it, you're doing two departments, not one. Correct. So it's really half that cost to each. That's a little easier to swallow, and that's okay. a reasonable cost, I think. I'm pretty familiar with upgrades. Considering that we haven't spent anything really so. on this system in years as far yeah. as an upgrade is concerned. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you for all the clarification. Thank Mr. you. Fister.
And then the second half, I can reiterate it again, if you'd like, we were asking to reduce $132,000 from instruction salaries and wages, add $23,000 to health um, services to offset that negative we just discussed, and $109,000 to transportation to offset those negatives there as well. Um, the other point of note in transportation, as we are in budget season and we have a tendency to not look at some of the operational areas when it comes to budget. Here's a perfect example is when we got our bill from MABE um, for our pool group insurance, as we are in a pool, um, our vehicle insurance is $14,000 high than what we had anticipated via the budget because that budget's remained relatively flat over the last few years. So now we're, again, coming forward with we need to start looking in our operational areas to support those because the cost of doing business just keeps going up and up and up. And with our flatline budgets, um, sometimes we're not able to support them. Bill has to be paid, have to find the money from somewhere. And that's what this reflects. Well, and wouldn't that um, be reflective of some of the newer vehicles we've replaced are going to carry a higher insurance rate than the lower ones we got rid of? Not, so not, to, not so much. Uh, to this, more this, to insure a newer well, vehicle than the buses has a part of it, and, and Sid can and speak to this. But I think it's more because of some of maybe the, because of the pool, as as we're all sharing that risk. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's where part, part of our increase would come from. We all got hit. Clarify the salary and wages um, that you're pulling from. You said salary lapse to offset. How, where is the salary lapse coming? So out? I'm going to be looking at all of the. Um, uh, instructional salary lines right. and looking basically line by line to find out where we may have somebody that we hired a little bit less, a little bit more, and adjust those as I go through there to be able to come up with this $132,000. Okay. Yeah, it's not like we're going to delete a position or anything like that. We're going to be, we're going to be taking $5 here, $10 there to, to fund this. And that is major, is, is, is based on the scale um, adjustment we made last year for the support staff. yes yes ma'am yes. mm -hmm. so this does require your approval um, and then once you approve it uh, we will letters written we will send this over to the commissioners tomorrow and then have a hearing over there I'm sure and talk to them about the exact same thing and ask for their approval okay so uh, I need a motion to approve the transfer request so there's two right there's two. Do we need to separate them There's one them letter, out? right? It's only one I'm letter. I'm sorry, the transfer oh, request letter, letter, letter I should say. The in category and the out category are in all In category does not require your approval. Oh, it's oh, just that's information right. only. You just have to send it to the commissioners. You just that's want right. to send okay. it for information sorry, only. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, um, again, I need a, a motion to approve I the move. transfer request letter to the commissioners. Second. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second to approve the transfer report request letter. I'm sorry, the transfer report letter to the commissioners. Mrs. Wright? Did I receive this one when I called your name? Captain Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? No. Nope. Ms. Sorry. I apologize. Yes. Ms. Carlo? Yes. Ms. Morissette? Yes. Ms. O'Connor? Yes. I have five of Thank you. Okay. You are approved to send the transfer request Thank to you. the commissioners. Thank you. Next item is Chinook Medical Gear. So this one probably, when you saw this, you're wondering, what the heck is Chinook Medical Gear? So um, what's before you is the uh, request uh, approval purchase order because it does total $31,650. It is for supplies. I will say these supplies um, are already in our schools. And let me explain this. So this is a little bit of an after fact. When the order was placed, we had an order placed under $25,000, and then we had a separate order placed. But looking at the vendor together, which is some of the things I'm charged with doing, when we con uh, consolidate single purchases to one vendor and it raises above a certain limit, we should take a look at that because we don't want to certainly say, okay, well, I know we have to do something at 25, so let's do one for 20 and one for 10. No, we're not going to do that. So this is what this is coming back to you. We did to, it wasn't done that way, but this when we came back and looked at Chinook and realized that these purchases for these safety and uh, stop the bleeding kits did exceed the twenty five thousand dollars. We wanted board approval for the purchase order for thirty one thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. It was purchased off of a GSA disaster contract. We did receive twenty five percent off of list price. I've listed those prices in the cover sheet before you. Um, 
and it was funded out of the capital budget and we should in the capital budget yeah. re receive this money back through one of the governor's grants Maryland safe school oh, grant has two hundred ninety thousand dollars so this comes out of that two hundred ninety thousand dollars so, so we, it's been approved for us to receive that money out of that. out of that grant well done so the cost to us is none but from a procedural standpoint that's, that's i wanted this board to approve this purchase order very good mr fister thank you very much okay so i have a question so was this bid out knowing that it was over twenty five thousand dollars no it was not um because we were able to use a cooperative purchasing agreement at a 25 percent discount we met with dr Ciatola and scott haas from des and it was on a cooperative purchasing agreement these are the same exact kits that we have in um, when you walk into like the gym or the main cafeteria. There's other companies out there that sell them and there's other people coming around trying to sell different things. But these are the kits that DES and them rep recommend it. And like I said, it's on a GSA contract, so it's already been pre-bid okay. on that. And, we, and we're in compliance by uh, yep. accepting, okay. And then, like I said, it's all yes. the $290,000 grant we have, so. Okay. So I just want to be in compliance part of the bid process. Oh, yes. Okay. yes. So be, although this is after the fact because we've already bought them, do we need to have an approval, official approval? To I would have, this? Uh, right, and that way I can put it in the file for the five years from now when the legislative auditors come back and say, did you go out and bid this? He, or I'm sorry, not bid. <laughs> Ms. Harper's bid, it's got me thinking. <laughs> um, did the board approve this purchase order? And the answer would be yes. Okay. So I need a motion to approve the Shinook Medical Gear Purchase. Moved. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the Chinook medical gear purchase. Mrs. Wright. Board members, please this time when I call your name, Captain Kelly. Yes. Mr. Harper. Yes. Mr. Yes. Ms. Lissette. Yes. Ms. O'Connor. Yes. Five in the affirmative. Medical, Chinook medical gear purchase is approved. Thank you. Thank and, you for your support. And thank you for um, getting us straight and doing it right. Absolutely. Next item is the Ken Island High School Varsity Lacrosse team to Eflin, North Carolina to compete April 17th through 19. Yes, we had a field trip request by Mr. Schreckengoss and the Ken Island High School Lacrosse team. Mm -hmm. They would leave um, on April 17th and they would miss one day of school um, April 18th and return on April 20th. Um, basically, they're going there for several different scrimmages and team building activities. I've looked over the um, itinerary and approved that part of it. The only concern I had was when they originally submitted this, they had that they were going to be driving in vans. Um, and I said, absolutely not. You have to have a uh, approved charter company that we have on our listing, which they went out and um, found an approved charter. Um, the trip will be paid for um, by uh, the team account, players, fundraisers, um, and donations. I don't have a school calendar in front of me, so it's Easter break. It is spring break, correct? Yeah. It's spring break. It is. Okay. So, so that's why they're. Oh, I should have said spring break. That's course. why they're missing oh. Thursday. Yes. And then coming back Friday afternoon late. Okay, thank you. I, I didn't have a calendar in front of me. I, I went through and looked over everything. Like I said, the only problem I had was using four personal vans to transport it, so no. they corrected that. Okay, any other questions? Uh, so I need a motion to approve. I, I do have. Oh, you do, I'm sorry. I, I'm just reading over here that how many chaperones are? are it's one to five. five okay. One to five? It's our high school requirement. Okay. 25, and, but, 25 but, players and yeah, one. It's only yeah, the boys team. The requirement is one to 15, and, yeah. and they have been oh, one to that. Five. And it's okay. only males too. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just. That's right. And um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Okay. Um, thank you. Chaperones and oh, they're um doing fundraising for their bus dollars. Yep. Okay. That's pretty commendable. Okay. Good. Will their boosters help them out at all? Their uh, sports boosters. I'm not sure. I, I can check into that. Okay. But at this point, they're not asking the school to fund anything? No. Wow. Okay. Any other questions? So I need a motion to approve the Ken Island High School Varsity Lacrosse team field trip on April 17 to 19 to Eflin, North Carolina. So moved. Second. The motion is second to approve the Varsity Lacrosse field trip. Mrs. Ray. 
Kelly? Yes. 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 Okay. Field trip is approved. Thank you. Do we have any other community participation, interest, or public comment? Okay. At this point, we're going to be we're a little ahead of schedule, which is good because we're going to move back into closed session, and I need a motion to go back into closed session. May we go into closed session? To just oh, sorry, okay. you got to <laughs> read. Okay. Oh. Sorry, let me. You Pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, I move we go into closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, pro demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this body was, has jurisdiction to consider matters that relate to the negotiations, to consult with staff, consultants, other individuals about pending or potential litigation, to consult with counsel, and to perform an administrative function. Okay, I'm glad I have a second. Second. Okay, um, we have a motion, second, move into <coughs> closed session. Um, this is Let the cameras off. Yes, you're right. Yes. 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 Motion carries. One moment, please. Now we can spot us by the rest of us. Okay, we're moving into closed session. We'll be back as soon as we're finished. Thank you. No, well, actually, while I'm carrying a bunch of stuff, I would love to go into okay. that um, door. Okay, um, you can't, like, yeah. It's all ready. <laughs> we go through yes. some Dr. Pepper yeah. down yeah. around yeah. here, Sharon. Like I've noticed a lot of people. Like, people like, we do the <laughs> diet, Dr. Pepper. You, I think I we take yours. Or orange crust. There you go. Is orange crust the one with caffeine? No, no, no. Orange soda has. Well, some orange soda does have caffeine. Not Orange crust doesn't. I used to love the Tropicana. They stopped making it. They don't make it. That was a Pepsi product, I think. Yeah, so that's orange crush is a coke product, I believe. Nope. But yeah, that's all I have at home in my fridge, and I rarely drink so. There he is. But I do drink that's, it when I'm here. That's like a guilty pleasure. Okay, we're ready. Okay, welcome back to our open session. Uh, we have one last thing: future meetings and events. February thirteenth is the school board budget work session. The twentieth is the school um, school board work session, the regular one. On the 21st is Mabe's Legislative Day Luncheon. If any of you are interested in going, please let me know. Um, and uh, we'll make sure that I meet you there or we go together. Uh, March 6th is the next school board meeting. The superintendent will present her budget at that meeting, and we will have to approve it at that meeting. And that is the budget that goes to the commissioners. March 20th is our regular school board work session. So uh, do I, any questions about that? So just real quick, on February 20th, the time for the um, uh It's our regular work session? work session from 11 to 2. That's what I have down, okay. And, and then, then from 2 to 4 <coughs> is the May um, orientation. Orientation. Yeah, it's our orientation of the staff. Yes, I blocked right. off um, okay. to do that all day. And, I and didn't. then um, you said uh, the 6th, that would be a 4.30. Um, the 13th work session, 13th. school budget work session is at 5. Okay, so um, March the 13th, uh, that'll be an evening. March 20th? March 20th. We don't okay. have a 13 March. Okay, so the March 6th 20th we have is a meeting, the 11 to 2, unless we change that. And the 20th would be 11 to 2. Correct. Okay, got it. Um, and one other thing before we close, I wanted to ask if you all were interested, since the closed sessions are so rushed, um, if starting in March we could advertise we have time do our closed session from 4.30 to 6.30 and start our regular meetings in front of the public at 6.30 instead of 6, which would give us enough time. It wouldn't extend much. We s tend to always need more time for the closed session than we do the What if we started at 4? Well, there's people that can't get here by 4. The, you know, Michelle's working until 4.30. Okay. So um, I don't know why we just, I'm just thinking we... I mean, and we will adjust the the open session agenda so we don't go too late. You know, I don't plan yeah. to do that. Like I said. Okay, I'm up for whatever. Are, are you? I think that's that? difficult for all of our award winners who have to come or want to come. And even six o'clock is late. We have 
Um, the union usually attends. I think we're getting into exactly what Darren cautioned us on about making changes during the school year. If we start a new year in July 1st and we adjust appropriately to a new set of scheduled meetings, that's different. But I'm, I'm telling you, all day today, I had our meeting time wrong. This has gotten really confusing, and we really shouldn't be changing these meetings and the times of. We can always have closed sessions at the end of our regular meetings if we run over on our closed sessions. I would prefer to do that than try to change I would prefer to do that meetings. than change the 6 o'clock hour. At this point. I think so, too. We choose to do it for the next school year. But, I mean... We're, we're roughly getting out of here between 9, 9.30. So if we have to add an extra half an hour on for a closed session, I have no problem. I hope everyone else is okay with that. I would rather do that than completely change the public's view of our 6 o'clock meeting. A lot um, of those people get here. I mean, they're rushing from practice to get mm -hmm. here at 6 o'clock for the recognitions. No. Or they're okay. putting dinner and off and until. No uh, off no. until. And does moving it to 6.30 create a new burden for them? I, I don't know. So. I would really like yeah. to stop okay. moving these times. Sounds like we have consensus not to do make that okay. change. Okay. Sure. At least not right now. Fine. That's okay. fine. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'm so moved. Yes. Okay. Uh, second. Second. Uh, motion and second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. <laughs> okay. Right. Thank you. You're adjourned. Aye.